12 rounds of boxing for the Junior Lightweight Championship of the World, sanctioned by the IBF. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue, trimmed with white and red, and weighing in at 129 pounds. His professional record, 52 victories, 37 KOs against only three defeats, with one draw. He comes to us from New Paltz, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger, former super bantamweight champion of the world, Little Caesar Tracy Harris and his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner wearing the black trimmed with red also weighing in at 129 pounds he brings a professional record of 26 and 0 13 ko's from st louis missouri ladies and gentlemen presenting the junior lightweight champion of the world the undefeated boy wonder eddie Hobson. Let's go ahead and check out the tail of the tape here. You see Patterson, six years older than Eddie Hobson, and he has a reach advantage of six inches as well. Now, the two weights, notice Patterson, they both weighed in at 129. They were reweighed again today, 24 hours later. Tracy gained six pounds. Eddie Hobson gained nine. The IBF rules are the rules for today. The 10-point must system is here. The standing eight is not in effect. The three-knockdown rule is not in effect. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round, and only the referee has the power to stop that bout. And you'll recognize this man, Mills Lane, working his 76th title fight. And here we go. Eddie Hobson, the southpaw, in the black trunks with his back to you. We keep talking about Eddie's hand speed. Tracy Patterson has noticed someone with decent hand speed as well. And one of the big questions of the fight will be, will Tracy bring his hand speed up to 130, and will he bring his power up to 130? Well, Eddie Hobson uh, working with the black trunks with the red trim. Tracy Patterson in the blue trunks. He's got Caesar across his waistband. Eddie Hobson again, a southpaw, as we saw, with Raul Marquez in, in the prelim. Good look at those fast hands of Eddie Hobson, who... Just eight a right hand from Tracy Patterson. First significant punch in the face. Yeah. You may think that, that uh, Tracy might have some trouble against the southpaw, but he's quick to point out that uh, he beat a southpaw to win the title. He defended against three southpaws successfully. But the fact is, Dan, he's right, and, and he does seem to fight, does not get bothered by the southpaw style, but none of those southpaws came close to having the speed of Eddie Hobson. Nor the movement. Uh, you have noticed that there is precious little lack of movement from Eddie Hobson. When he stands stationary, it almost looks strange. It looks strange, but it's a sight that, uh, that his trainers, Roger Bloodworth and Lou Dibble, would love to see more of. They think that he bounces too much, that he wastes too much energy, and he takes a lot of power off his punches because he doesn't get his feet set properly. There, slap with the right hand. And that's what that was, was a slap. It was a, a good counter punch, but... Really had nothing on it, just cuffed the ear of Patterson. You saw that he tried to turn the left over there as he got it in. It, it uh, was at an awkward angle and didn't do much damage. He can put a left hand down the pipe with good effect. It's just that he doesn't plant his feet often enough to do it. If he, if he gets comfortable doing that, he gets comfortable with less movement. Oh, hey, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. A little warning to Eddie Hobson from Mills Lane. As I was saying, if he gets more comfortable planting his feet and putting himself in danger, I think it's a little bit of self-confidence problem there, Dan. He just doesn't want to put himself in danger. Although you wouldn't believe it as he's carrying his right hand down by his knee there. And, and you saw Tracy take advantage of it and hurt him a little bit. You know, a nice little display there by Eddie Hobson. Of course, he never touched Tracy Patterson with any of that little flurry there. But he kept him off long enough to yeah. recover. The wind might have driven him back. <laughs> you punch that fast, it creates a breeze. A very, very conservative first round by Tracy Patterson. He's got the look of a guy who expects this one to last a while. The end of the first. Back now for the beginning of the second round here at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. I'm Dan Deardorff along with Alex Wallow. We're here for this 12-rounder. Eddie Hobson, the champion, wearing the black. 
And if you had any doubt, though, the people at home good right hand again by Trace. If you had any doubt at home about how to score that round, you should have heard Loon do the in-between rounds. As soon as Eddie Hopkins sat down, he said, Eddie, he won the What a right hand by Harris, by Tracy Patterson. Oh, my gosh. Eddie Hopkins is can't hardly get up. Eddie Hopkins still wobbling. And he's still hurt. And oh, he hurt again. This really was the fight. Eddie Hobson moving to his right, and boom, oh. right hand dropped it flat on his back. Eddie very gainly tried to continue, got up every time, and answered Mills line. He's number two on the ropes. Makes crazy miss the first punch, reacted well to it, but came in with an inside left, and down went Eddie again. You know, I like too much excitement. And this is the last knockdown. Actually, it's a big Eddie trying four. to fight back, fourth knockdown. Eddie trying to fight back. Right hand misses, but it did enough to... Tracy just had no legs in him. That, that wasn't even a punch. And Mills Lane, Dan, I think it's safe to say, Mills Lane stopped it, not because of that knockdown, but really because he was in no shape to continue to face any more punishment. We want to remind everybody that we're going to show you the epic battle between Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas Hearns when they fought to unify the welterweight title almost 14 years ago. This is worth watching again. Stay with us, everybody. We'll be back to Reno right after this. The official time, one minute, 37 seconds of round number two. The winner, now a two-time world champion, now the IBF Junior lightweight champion of the world, the Little Caesar, Tracy Harris. Harris. Tracy, hey, yo, Tracy, hey, yo. thank you very much, I appreciate it, but uh, let's just take one second. Congratulations. The question, one question, a lot of questions coming into this fight, Tracy, for you and for the people, uh, the fans of boxing watching you. First of all, one question was, did you bring your power up from 122? And clearly, you looked even more powerful at 130 pounds. Okay, before I answer anything, I want to give thanks to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving me the strength and the courage to come out here tonight and do this. Uh, yes, I did bring my power up. I was killing myself for uh, the time that I stayed at 122, and uh, going up in weight is only going to help me. You have a fabulous record against Southpaws. When did you sense you could hit him with the right hand and do damage? Well, I can hit any Southpaw with a right hand. You know, that's what they're open for, the straight right hand. And uh, that's what we worked on in training, and it worked well for us today. Tracy, this is the biggest fight you've had without your adopted father, Floyd, in the corner with you. I, I know he's watching the fight. Uh, what is your sense of, of uh, the feelings about your relationship with him at this point? Well, all I really can say at this time is that I love my dad. And if you're watching, I, I know you. I'm going to tell you right now, I love you. 
and uh, I'm hoping when I get back home, we can get together and put this thing behind us. I love you, Dad. And also, happy birthday to my mother. I love you. Let's take a look, uh, Tracy, if we can, at some replays. I'm sure you, I don't have to convince you too hard. This is the final knockdown. This actually wasn't really much of a knockdown. He never recovered from that first right hand. That, that one missed, but you hit him on the back, and he, his legs were so gone at that point that he went down. Now we're going to go down to the, to the heart of the matter, which was the first knockdown, the first right hand. T tell me what you're thinking right here, if you can remember. Well, right now, I, I think I caught him with something a little earlier before then. I saw him wincing a little bit, like it was hard for him to see. So I uh, figured it would be a good time to try to drop something real serious on him, and that's what I did. Do you have any philosophy when you're trying to finish a man who's hurt like this? Well, I like to take my time a little bit more than what I did here. But as hurt as he was, I was just trying to land something. And I knew uh, I could get him out of there. And you did. Once again, let's take a look at the end right here. With it, once again, you missed with the right, but he was so unsteady. Tracy, you're a two-time world champion now. What are your goals at this point? Well, my goal is to defend this title as long as I can, you know, and I feel that as long as I stay healthy, God able, willing, I can hold the title for some time. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Now let's find the former champion who lost in his first title defense, and there you see the two men. Eddie, I know you feel like the roof just dropped out. Tell me what happened. You got hit with a right hand in the second round, and you just didn't recover. No, I did not. I just didn't recover. I'm, I'll be back, though. I'll be back. What did you... I mean, it's a stupid question, I guess, when the man's just... And I really hate to ask this, but, but what was different from him than what you expected, Tracy? What weren't you able... To, I'm sorry, Eddie. What weren't you able to do that you thought you could do coming in to, to defend your title? So, I did. This came out wrong. I just came out wrong. I'll be back, though. I'll be back. What happened now? What happened now? We told him this guy's going to be throwing right hands at you. When you jab, don't drop your left hand. If you'll notice, he hit him with the right hand while he was jabbing and he had his left hand over here. I said, if you throw the jab, I'm saying move on the side, but throw that left hand at him. So you block the right hand. But he jabbed and he dropped his left hand and that's when he threw a right hand at him. You've heard Eddie talk about the fact that he will be back. Can you put a guy back together after this? I, I mean, I know, you know Eddie is such a... Uh, 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 an emotional guy, what do you do to put him back together after something like this? Well, mentally, he's got to find himself, you know? And then when he's ready to call, come back, he'll call me up, he'll be back there, you know? And uh, this kid has his first loss, and, and uh, who knows, there may be more, but I think he's going to come back, and maybe he'll be a better fighter, maybe he'll pick up some of the stuff that Roger and I have been trying to show him what he wanted to do. It's a loss, what can you do? The guy hit him with the right punches, he didn't, get, he didn't do the right thing he was supposed to do, you can't fault the guy, and you can't fault Tracy Patterson for winning the fight. Thank you very much. Thanks for talking to us, Eddie. I appreciate it. Now let's go back to Dan Deardorff at ringside. All right, Alex Wallow, thank you very much. And again, a reminder, coming up, we're going to take you back to 1981 to show you this fantastic fight between Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas Hearns. Let's go back and watch what happened in the second round. Here's the first one. This is the punch that started it and ended it all at once. Right there a complete bullseye by Tracy Patterson takes Eddie Hobson out he got back up was just trying to hang on for dear life got up against the ropes and here comes the second knockdown and this is really a short left but Eddie Hobson was on his way down anyway and Mills Lane in to separate the two fighters and then finally mercifully it ended here not much of a punch by Tracy Patterson Eddie Hobson was all gone by then. So congratulations to Eddie Hobson. Obviously, Alex, he took that power with him when he went to 130. Well, this early knockdown, this early knockout, rather, by Tracy Patterson, gives us an opportunity to bring you a look back at, well, just simply one of the great